Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be ranking all of my Natasha Denona palettes. I previously did this ranking video, I want to say maybe like six or eight-ish months ago, but since then I have picked up a few more palettes, and doing, and during my Pan That Palette, like, journey, it's definitely, like, changed my ranking up for all my Natasha palettes, so I thought I would come here and do an updated palette ranking since I don't think, well, there is one palette I kind of want to pick up just to test out, you know, that type of formula against the rest of them. But other than that, I know I'm not going to be buying too much more Natasha Denona palettes in the future. So I thought this would be a good time to do an updated list. I do have a full playlist with all of my ranking, my eyeshadow palettes videos. I'll have that up in the cards if you'd like to binge watch. With all that out of the way, let's jump in. Like I always do in these videos, I will start with the bottom of the list and work my way all the way to the top. So the last palette, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth in this list is the big green brown palette. Now this, I have just, it has to go in the bottom of the list just because it's so much money. This has no right being over $200, which it is, which is, yeah, it's disgusting. Roast me down below. It's a gorgeous palette. I do have pan in a lot of these, not a lot, I have pan in four of them because I included this in a pan that palette because it was so much money, I had to include this in a project pan. How do I, like, I, I regret this, but also don't regret this. I regret using the money to, to get this, right? But I don't regret testing it out because there was um, a big debate a while ago about whether or not the mini palettes, the midi palettes, the kind of regular sized so-called palettes were as good a quality as these giant palettes because these giant palettes were kind of held up as like the go-to amazing luxury eyeshadows as they were. And I think these were the first ones she came out with. So I think she had these big ass palettes. I think she had the star palette. And then I think she started coming out with like the smaller ones, like the sunset palette. But this was just not worth it. <laughs> I like the shades. Um, do I pull this out often enough? No, I do not. I do not pull it out. I need to pull it out more, but it is at the bottom of my Natasha ranking list. Next, another product that I just don't think is cost effective, especially now that we have so many options for Natasha shadows. She has these five pan palettes, um, and this is just palette number two. So this was kind of a like red pinky neutral palette. I don't like these because these are $48. $48. The minis are $25. So this is what a mini looks like next to it. Honestly, you're better off going off with a mini. And now that you have the midi palettes, which is kind of just slightly smaller than her kind of regular 129 palettes, those are only 65 So this is 48 That a bigger midi palette with a much more shade range is only like $20 more. Go for that. Go for a midi or go for a mini. Don't get these. I honestly don't think they're really that great. <laughs> They are very fragile. As you can see, I've broken a couple of these shades. And I don't think you really, I don't, I don't think this gives you enough of a good test of Natasha shadows for the price. If you really just want to dip your toes in and try the formula out for the first time, get a mini. Get a mini in a color store you like. Now that there, there are so many minis available now, I think there's like five or six of them. You can pick one of those and use it instead. Don't go for one of these because it's just too much money and you really only get a couple of looks out of them and they're just like, okay. Whereas the minis, I really like the minis. You know, you get more looks out of them. They're a lot cheaper. They're like 20 or $25 as opposed to the 48 that this one is. It's just better. So these I really don't like. I kind of wanted to clutter them. I kind of wanted to clutter this. Uh, I don't know, but it's it's just like meh. Again, it's like that weird mid-range that's really no longer necessary from the brand. Next, I have a mini palette that I just have it this low because it's not the exact like shades and tones. And I think I'm kind of getting slightly bored of these because I have these shades in like my pan that palette. This is the mini love palette. They're gorgeous. I like the tones. The shades are really, really pretty, but this is pretty similar to what I have in my pan that palette. And I like some of the other mini palettes, those color stories better. Um, but I do love everything about like the packaging, the presentation, the quality of the shades is just as nice as, you know, the big and the small palettes alike. Uh, but this just isn't like my go-to color story. And I, I'm actually really glad I didn't buy the big midi love palette. And I just got this one instead. Coming up next, and I kind of thought the ranking would have this a little bit higher since I like it so much. Now we're getting into palettes where they're, I, I like all these and they're kind of difficult to rank. But down here, I've got the Leela palette. Um, the reason why I picked this to pan is because it was one of my least favorite Natasha palettes. And I have to say why I am enjoying the process and I am being creative. 
ranking it with my Natasha palettes, it's still pretty low. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek with my Pan That palette here, uh, but this is what the Lilo looks like. I did rearrange mine so it might look different, um, but this is the challenge that I brought myself in 2021. But still, these aren't really the kind of tones I would say are my favorite. I definitely like more grungy, more greens kind of shades. So for me, this isn't exactly like if I had all the Natasha palettes lined up like I do now, this wouldn't really be the first one I would pick. But I am doing really well with my Pen That Palette series. If you uh, like following along with Pen That Palette, I'll throw my Pen That Palette playlist for this year up in the cards. All right, so this one is this high up purely because of sentimental reasons. Next, we have the Sunset Palette. I have such a long history with the Sunset Palette. The, I mean, it's it's gorgeous. I have to admit, this is beautiful, and I almost dropped it. <laughs> Did you see my my life flash before my eyes? This is a beautiful palette. Worth the money? Arguably, probably not. But I went through so much to get this palette. And this palette, I lived through the hype this got when it first released. And this was my first Natasha palette. I saved up. I waited for the sale. I finally got it. And it was like everything that I like I wanted. And I felt so luxurious. Like uh, this, this made me feel connected to like beauty YouTube in a way only mass consumerism can. <laughs> so while I don't reach for it that often, I actually almost debated panning this palette instead of Lila. I was very close to doing that, but then I realized a lot of these warm shades I had in my previous Pan That palette, and I didn't really want there to be overlap, so I gave myself a bigger challenge of picking a palette with tones that I don't reach for as often. But this is super sentimental to me, and I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of it. All right, next I have two mini palettes that I really like, and they're just because they're color stories that I love. First, I have the mini retro palette. I love these grungy tones. They're so pretty, especially like right there just I, I love that so much um so really glad I got this and whenever I do have a mini I do my best to not pick up the full size palettes like the, I have the mini love I was actually just thinking I wanted to pick up a midi palette that's actually the only palette size I don't own from Natasha Denona is the midi and I was going through and I'm trying to decide which midi I do want to pick up because that is the one palette I do want to pick up from Natasha sometime soon and they have the love they have the um I closed my window, but they have the love and I realized I've got the mini love palette. I don't need the, the big size love palette. I think I'm going to go with the sunrise palette because that's the only one that I don't think has a mini. Um, so I think I'm going to do that one because I've tried out every other size of Natasha palette except for the middies. Um, so I got this instead of getting the retro palette, but this is gorgeous. I love the color story. I love the price point. I love the size. And I feel like this is a good example of like a palette distilled down into just like some great, great shades. There isn't really any repeat here. I, I really like how this is laid out. Same goes for the mini gold palette. Now the gold palette, I had to talk myself out of buying that gold palette so many times. I desperately wanted that gold palette. It was gorgeous. Greens, gold, just everything. But the mini palette gives you a great condensed version of it. You get a beautiful gold shade. You got, um, honestly, I think these two neutrals probably could have just been more green shades, but that's just me as a green lover. I want more green shades, but it's beautiful. And while I still every now and then catch myself looking at the gold palette, I know I don't need it because I have this and it's beautiful and I love my grungy greens. All right, we're at the top two. I have two palettes left and to be honest, I sat here and I went back and forth as to which one was gonna be my number one palette. And I surprised myself. So palette number two, my second favorite Natasha palette is the newest one to my collection. It's the Circle Local palette. I cannot get over how much I love this palette. I've done a palette roulette. If you missed that, I'll throw it up in the cards. I also did a, it was a two or three looks one palette. I'll throw that up in the cards as well. But I am just so impressed by these shades just they're beautiful they swatch amazing they go on the eyes they're just pigmented beyond belief and i love how colorful this is and this is a full colorful palette this isn't like the tropic palette where you only had one row of colorful shades it's all colorful and it's beautiful i believe i said in one of my previous videos i didn't want to rearrange this but then i saw I want to rearrange it now because I saw Natasha on her um, Instagram stories. They specifically swatched out just the blues 
from this palette in a row and I was like I want that row in my palette so I think I'm gonna do it so at some point um, this is how it actually comes it looks like this um, I am gonna rearrange it and the way you do that um, they're all my, um, magnetic pans and they have holes in the back so you just stick a um, paper clip through and they pop out and then you can rearrange so I am gonna do that <laughs> so I'll post probably on my Instagram um, a full actual post when I do that here's my Instagram page make sure you follow me there I do a uh, daily pan that palette updates as well well not daily pan that palette updates but whenever I do hit um, a pan that palette like milestone or a new look or something I post it there first and I do do my best to do daily looks because I do do my makeup every day so whenever I do post or I do a new look I post it there as well so make sure you follow me there but yes I love this so much it's beautiful it really just jumped over all the palettes that I've had until now which is saying a lot which is saying a lot for someone who has a lot of Tatasha palettes so I love this a ton but 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 it did not kick out my number one favorite palette contender can you guess which one it is? Do you, you can probably guess why. <laughs> my number one palette from Natasha Denona is the Metropolis palette. I freaking love this palette. And it's specifically because of the grungy tones. This palette is a grungy dream. And they've got beautiful greens. You do see a little bit of repeat in these first two rows. The first row is kind of like a very neutral kind of matte to shimmer. Um, the second row is very like neutrally shimmers. But this bottom, the bottom two rows, and they're beautiful, and they all work so well together, and they really look really good on the eye. And this is the one. This is the one. If I were to only keep one Natasha Denona palette, which most of <laughs> stop my heart, <laughs> but if I were only keep one, it'd be this one. I love this palette. And I love how the um, pans are so small. If there's one thing I've learned when I'm trying to pan a Natasha palette is how much freaking product it is, and specifically how dense the mattes are. I have been using the Lila palette for six months now and I have yet to hit pan on a mat. And I use it every day. <laughs> I use it every day. So I know like it's gonna last a long time. I love that these are a little bit smaller, but I get more a, a little bit more variety here. And I just love the grungy tones and I love the greens. I'll never get over how much I love these greens. These grungies. These are my favorites. I like it. So that is it. That is my updated Natasha Denona ranking video. Let me know down below. <laughs> What are your favorite Natasha palettes? You don't have to own them, but if you do own them or if you've just seen them online or you've seen people use them, which one is your favorite? Let me know down below and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.